It's hard to just even use the English word warrior when you're talking about what it means to be a warrior. Because as indigenous people, we were born into this life and we believe that it's our duty and responsibility to defend our land in which our language, our culture, our existence flows from. There's no separating us from our land. It's a spiritual connection that goes deep since the beginning of our people. So as a warrior, we are a defender, we are a protector. And as a warrior, we would do and by any means protect and defend our people and anything that comes in, in the way of that. And here we're talking about the contamination of water that um, so much people depend on. I've been down here since the middle of September and here to be in solidarity with people that are fighting the Dakota Access Pipeline. Across the river at Sacred Stone Camp is where it originally started. There was like a handful of people there for a long time. But so once these guys actually came here and really started building and destroying the earth, so everyone just started coming here faster and every day it was just growing and growing. Before you know it, that sacred stone camp was just overflowing. I came out here in a response to a call for medical support. We received an invite from some of the matriarchs and indigenous leadership from this Lakota, Dakota, Nakota territory to come help fight the black snake, help fight the pipeline, and some matriarchs' opinions by any means necessary, and the spirit of collective resistance and use of diversity of tactics to do that. There's hundreds of camps in this bigger Standing Rock encampment that's called the Ochefisiko Camp. It got up to around 20,000 people, but a lot of the people that are here and have maintained camps here. There's High Star Camp, there's Wild Oglala's Camp. So this is a big massive mobilization. There's a lot of people here and they, and they want to stop a pipeline. Went from just a few of us in little small groups going out and shutting down the pipeline wherever we could, you know, like multiple sites a day, everything. We were just on it. Black snake kill us! Black snake kill us! My folks said if you're really gonna fight the system, they will put the bottle down and get to fighting with us. And I believe in every one of them the same, that if we really got to fighting, every one of them would bang with us. So I pray they see who they really are, though. Beautiful out here gripping on a fully auto. Full bottle, never sell out to the fucking system. Stand up right now, I pray you coming with us. All right, now from here. On three, we're gonna move. One, two, three. Move, move, move. Diversity of tactics is a turn of phrase that represents the very real fact that for every one person on the front line who's there who can stand and catch rubber bullets, there are many folks behind them, be those folks medics, be those folks logistics personnel, be those the folks in the kitchen who fed them that day. I believe that the only way that anyone could organize as a diversity of tactics because we're all so diverse people. Like, how, where else could you get, you know, thousands of people all to come together like that and form this community and actually people are, are not, you know, like killing each other. <laughs> you know, look at the rest of society. We need all the things. We need people litigating in court, we need people doing quote-unquote petitions, we need people praying, and also people that are doing direct action. A lot of people did a lot of different things, went to courthouse, went to the state capitol, locking down on the machinery and actually physically stopping the construction and the machines for the day. Had massive caravans out to just make a presence and stop the construction. Stopping it everywhere we could, any way we could, using our bodies, locking down, just showing up in force and scaring the workers off. Just the pure presence of 400 water protectors and native people would shut Dapple down for the day. And sometimes they would actually be running to their trucks because they know what they're doing is wrong. Like, I would be scared too. At one point, lockdowns are really effective. They could stop construction, they could stop 
what was happening for the day on like prospective work sites, but then I got to the point where it was so militarized and the resources that we were up against, it didn't matter that we had the intention to like go and lock down to something, it just wasn't an option. So then people have to like reevaluate the situation, ask themselves what it means to be effective, look at the violence that's being perpetrated on them, and then collectively come back together and decide what tactics you're going to use. And then people started seeing things like flaming cars on highways and what have you, because a lot of the times that sacred fire was the only thing protecting people from the crazy cops and military from coming in and wrecking shop. The climax of, of everything that I witnessed when I was here was when the police took the frontline cap. People sacrificed vehicles that day to blockade. What does that mean, sacrifice vehicles? Lit up. Were it not for people who had been training for these sorts of nonviolent civil disobedience confrontational situations, that pipe had been built by now.